<laughs> we'll go ahead and get started because uh, you know, 24 minutes of our, our webinar is going to be dedicated to the premiere of the show. And then uh, we'll, we'll use the remainder of time for folks to provide feedback, you know, ask questions, give comments, whatever the case may be. Uh, first of all, just want to thank everyone for joining us today. My name is Dr. Ijoma Ananuju. I am the coordinator of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusive Education program at Toro University. Um, and today I'm also one of the co-creators of uh, the Black Academics TV show. Uh, we wanted to be able to use this final Diversity Now webinar to uh, premiere our, our television show that we've been working on since the beginning of fall. Uh, I have my co-creators here, uh, Arnani Santos, who's the principal of Elite Charter School in Vallejo. And then I have Dr. Kiana O'Leary, who uh, co-taught a class with me at Alder University this summer. Uh, we also have one of our contestants with us, Delana Goins. Uh, Ms. Goins, appreciate you being here and hopefully our other two contestants will be able to join us at some point as well. Um, I'm going to hand, hand it over to uh, um, my colleague Armani Santos here in a second because he is the host of the show. But just real quickly, the whole purpose behind this show is that we are trying to think outside of the box about how do we diversify uh, our educator profession? How do we get more folks of color into the classroom teaching our babies? How do we get more folks of color into administration leading our babies, right? How do we diversify our K through 12 school system? And this is our this is our answer, right? It's not it's not our only answer, but it's one of our answers that we've come up with for how to do it. De -de -de -de. Definitely outside of the box thinking, but I think you all will enjoy it as you see uh, what we had to present today. So, without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Santos. Man, you know I'm just ecstatic, man. I'm so hyped to be here today. Uh, you know, just want to shout out uh, Toro. Uh, you know, for being the first to go ahead and step up and, you know, premiere uh, this groundbreaking show, Black Academics. I mean, I, I'm really juiced, you know, um, I've been in education for, you know, 20, 20 years or so. And, you know, I, you know, just trying to get more uh, people involved in education to to be able to impact our young people. I'm just juiced. I, I told you, John, I'm not going to take up too much time because we did. We do want to. Uh, you know, uh, leave some some time for question and answer at the end. But, you know, when you're excited like that, so, you know, sometimes you just, you know, you, you just get to going and you can't stop. I got my popcorn. I hope you guys got something to, to chew on because it's going to be very entertaining. Uh, man, we ready to get going, IJ. You ready? You on mute, brother. Well, without further ado, we go ahead and press play. And let's get into it. God, I got to be unmute, uh, unmuted when I when I do this. All right, let's try it again. All right, without further ado, Black Academics, man, coming to you live and direct to our University of Vallejo, California. You got your host, Arnani Santos, the game orchestrator. Yeah, let's, let's do it. What's good with it? Welcome to Black Academics, a show where three educators will compete against each other to see who's the dopest. And I'm your host, Arnani Santos, a.k.a. the game orchestrator. Hello. Today's theme is financial literacy. Each teacher will be given 50 minutes to lesson plan on some related topic to financial literacy. Round one will be 35 minutes and consists of a lesson complete with activity. Now round two will be 15 minutes and consists of an assessment to measure the student's learning. In addition, each contestant will be given a backpack or a briefcase for the game that they must use in their lesson. And today's items are differentiation, social media, and last but definitely not least, music. You did. All right, y'all, let's meet our teachers. First up, we have Delana Goins, a reading specialist from the Palmdale School District. She's a former classroom teacher who has been in the game for almost 30 years. I think I'd really like to see more people of color becoming educators. 
I see how magical it is. I see how wonderful and what a great impact our men can make in the classroom. How will I win? Hmm. By making sure that I provide an engaging lesson and make it fun. Next, we have Greg Seawall, a seventh grade math teacher in Gardena, California. It's really important for me as a black man to demonstrate excellence in everything that I do. Like I, I really like to embody my, you know, the values and the virtues that I believe and I hold high in myself. Building on that, what I want to do is I want to first off showcase black excellence from a teaching perspective. My goal is to pretty much put black educators on the spotlight, show the world not only what we can do, but perhaps inspire some other, you know, black young men and women who may be considering getting into teaching to go ahead and go for it. Last but definitely not least, we have Corey Saxton, Senior Pastor of Christ Church of the Valley. He also runs the Lancaster Youth Development Foundation with his wife, as well as runs his own financial consulting company for the last 15 years. Really passionate about finance, really passionate about entrepreneurship because growing up I didn't have much. Um, but I saw people, I had a great role model, um, a great infrastructure between my grandfather and my uncle who were business owners. And I said, if you're gonna work hard, you may as well work hard at your own business so that you can live a dream life. I'm all about winning. I'm very competitive. We're gonna crush the other competitors. Um, you know, hey, second place ain't so bad if you're losing to a stud. All right, cool. Now that we've had a chance to meet our teachers, let's go ahead and pop on in and watch them meet their students. But you all have 10 minutes okay, on a timer to go ahead and discuss amongst yourselves which is the item that you want to have. Okay, to be honest, I'll bring some matches. I would bring an axe. Okay, well you can survive without water or food for multiple days, so somebody would need to bring water. I would say you should get a fishing rod. Uh, a water purifier. Oh yeah, you oh. you boil it. You can charge it. Charge it you down. boil the water. A oh, water process. Yeah. Oh, huh? I'll bring you a water processor. Yeah, that's what I meant, a water processor. Let's now transition to Delena. Looks like she's building that rapport the and telling the kids arts more about herself. That specializes in delivering dance, music, drama, visual art, computer animation, and all kinds of other wonderfully artistic things to young people just like you. So it's your turn now. Ivy, you like to play football and do ballet? Um, I've just been doing I've just been doing it for like a year and a half. And right before quarantine, we we're gonna have our exam to go to grade two, but it got canceled because of oh. coronavirus. So do you, do you play video games? Uh yes, but not as much as I used to. Okay. Got it. Um, well let me ask you this. Um, are you are you a sneakerhead or you like tennis shoes? Uh yes. What kind of what's your favorite brand? Uh, I like to play basketball, so I like Nike. I'm a Nike guy myself, man. Jordan 1s are my favorite shoes all the time. If you see some, get them in the 10, I'll pay you back. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, Marvin. Yeah. All right, check game. Let's talk with our contestants and see how they feel after meeting their students. I, I just really wanted to connect with them. When, once I found out that they were middle schoolers, um, I wanted it to be upbeat. I wanted it to be more fun than anything. I'm nervous about my opponents making a stronger impact and getting the aha that I want to get. I'm, I'm going to admit that uh, anxiety and nervousness is something that I typically don't experience. Um, I've taught entrepreneurship. I've taught investing to kids that go all the way from the seventh grade all the way through college. Right now, distance learning is what we're all doing. So it was an opportunity for me to, to put together all of the tools that I've been learning these past few months. You know, from hearing the description, some of them love math and some of them are terrible at math. Being able to deliver that instruction in such a way where the highs can like, you know, be having a sufficient level of challenge and they're not bored. Um, but then the kids who are struggling a little bit more can still access it completely without any real roadblocks. Social media um, is, is simple. Some of the best financial advice around you can get off of TikTok. Given my background in classical music and just music in general, because I love it, um, I decided to share some things that might be a little, a little different, something that's fresh. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna piggyback off of their enthusiasm that they already hold for Nipsey Hussle. Um, and then I'm gonna use that to basically, I guess, further and continue Nipsey's mission in this classroom right here, right now. 
All right, y'all, before we get started, let's meet our judges. <clears throat> First, we have Amaya, who is a senior in high school. Shout out to class of 2021. Our next judge is Kyla, who recently just graduated and is a freshman at Texas Southern. You go on, girl, with your bad self. Are we ready? Are you sure? All right, cool. I'm with it. The first person we're going to go check out, we're going to tap in with Corey to see what he got cooking. So our, our lesson and our message today about financial literacy is going to be about entrepreneurship and investing today. Number one, if you want to be financially literate um, and, and be in control of your financial future, the most successful and the wealthiest people in the world, they read books. In fact, 85% of self-made millionaires read two or more books a month. Now this is the cash flow quadrant. Brandon, I can see you on my screen still. Give me a thumbs up if you can see this. Okay, cool. So there's only four ways that you can make money. Number one is if you're an employee. That means that you have a job, um, you have a boss, and you're literally trading time for money. 95% of people out there are employees, but 95% of the people only control 5% of the wealth. Um, Self-employed, you have more freedom, but you're still trading your time for money. Now on the other side, only 5% of people wind up over here, but they control 95% of the wealth. Um, and the last step in the cash flow quadrant is an investor, right? And this is where you take your money. You can be an employee and be an investor, but employees make fewer dollars. So there's less money to make work for you. But a business owner, typically you can make more money and have more money working for you. And then you have a self-employed artist. Notorious B.I.G., as good as he was as a rapper, he was a self-employed artist. He only made money when he made music. So Sean Puffy Combs, regardless of if he made music or not, he had all of these acts, all of these self-employed people like Notorious B.I.G. and all of the other artists. When they made music, he made money. Now that we had a chance to peep out Corey, let's go ahead and see what Greg up to. Default. Man, that song was dope, though. Any, anybody know who that is, by the way? I'm, I'm just one. I'm just curious. Does anybody know who, who that is that was just playing right now? Well, Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hussle. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I remember him. He sounds familiar. But, you know, us old folks, look, look at these greats. Us old folks, sometimes we forget things. And so I'm trying to remember, what exactly was he famous for again? I, I can't remember. Rapping. I think he's famous for the words that he says in his music. So so the message. Okay. So he was he was really, really big on something called financial literacy okay and what that means is he was really really big on trying to help young folks like yourselves to be able to earn money and to not only earn money but hold on to their money if you need a little bit of help and you're not understanding how to get in go ahead and ask for some help in the chat and i'll be happy to help you all right so let's go ahead and get started so the first thing the first question i got for y'all is have you ever heard of the stock market everybody has heard of it great Glad to hear so let's do one more. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a stock whose value has gone down in the past day, right? And so it works the same way. You'll be in that same section of the website. You're going to go to the part where it's showing it in red, and you're seeing these ones who decreased by a certain amount. So let's go ahead and find a stock who decreased in the past day. All right, we got our responses. Let's take a look. American Software, that's right. Ollie, ooh, they're doing terrible. Tesla's doing really bad, too, surprisingly. Yep, two of us said Ollie's bargain. That's good. And one of us said Big Con. And last but not least, we got Delana. Let's go check out her lesson. Um, I'm excited to see what she brings to the table. Solutions. At the end of this lesson, be able to construct a financial plan for someone else. You should be able to apply financial literacy information to the creation of a social media post. All right. So what is financial literacy? Financial literacy involves the following practices, earning, saving, spending, owning, or owning, I'm sorry, tracking, giving, investing, and safeguarding. Okay, so this is Wolfgang Mozart, Tony Braxton, Richard Wagner, Sammy Davis Jr., Joseph Bouillon, who's very interesting, and Rihanna. Well, I know, I know how much money Rihanna has. You're going to just create it. So however, what social media posts are you guys uh, hooked on to? Do you have a social media account? Um, me and my brother aren't allowed social media until we're 14. 
Okay. <laughs> okay, so what you need to do is you need to insert a slide with another way or um, with a, a supposed post that you would use, okay? Here on Black Academics, we're gonna rate and determine the winner based on GPA, grade point average, just like we in school. Each contestant is gonna be rated and graded based on round one and round two. Now, what are grades based on, you might ask? Now, grades are gonna be based on creativity and knowledge about the subject, but you can't be boring. Grades will also be based on engagement and how they incorporate each of those items from that briefcase full of game, AKA that backpack. Additionally, each class is gonna give the teacher a grade as well. This is what you call multiple measures of assessment. Hello. Now that final GPA is gonna be determined upon the average between the scores from the judges and the scores from the class. Man, I'm so curious to see how Corey did. Let's go ahead and hear from his students. Well, I was paying attention, but I wasn't really engaged into the conversation. He incorporated everything else and I was engaged, uh, but he didn't include music. Mostly towards the end, he started asking us questions and involving us in what he was talking about. But in the beginning, it was just him talking and explaining things, which kind of made me like, I don't know, kind of like zone out a little. Judges, 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 what's good? All right, we had a chance to hear from the students. Now it's time to get your input. It wasn't fun or creative, but it was very informative. He did have a strong introduction too, and he came really prepared. And it was very easy to understand the lesson to me. He didn't like make it really hard and he was very like upbeat and engaging with the students. And I like how he could like speak to the students and actually have a conversation with them. I liked how after he was teaching, he then went like almost one by one to the students to see what they learned and getting to know them and how his lesson related to them. So overall, we gave you a B. Um, we thought that the information was great. Um, you were very knowledgeable in your topics. The students were engaged. You incorporated social media, which was great. We would have wanted more visuals just so the students could follow along, so like a slideshow. Yeah, we think you did really good. Um, I really like how you came in with a really strong introduction and you were really prepared and you had high energy. Um, and also how you were engaging with the students kind of after and you talked to them one-on-one. -on -one. I really like that. Thank you, Judge Anaya. I'm talking about the time. I didn't want to go over my time, so I flew through my information, but then I had time left at the end. I'm like, oh man. I had more visuals that I was going to do earlier, but I said I'm not going to have time for all of this, so I cut it to the basic chart, and that's what ended up getting my grade dropped. You know, you feel the nerves and, and, and a little angst, um, because anytime you get any kind of grade or evaluation, but it's pretty cool. They're, I think they were generous. <laughs> now for grade. I would say I'll give him an A, because he kind of brought in my attention with the Nipsey also at the start, and he still incorporated music. For the stocks, it seemed like he knew what, uh, what he was talking about. He used all the backpack requirements. He was very knowledgeable, and I was paying attention to the time. I think it was creative, but I don't, I would say it was fun, but for me, I wasn't really like interested in it. It was creative, and it started off fun with him playing like Nip. The purpose was that and it goes to the social media one too, is that they had to pick one social media stock mm -hmm. and then they had to pick other stocks that match like their interests. Okay, so the very beginning, uh, we both thought that it was very good that you incorporated Nipsey Hustle. Um, we kind of saw that it was going into a business or something regarding stocks and money. And so for that round, uh, we gave you a B. For round two, we gave you an A. Um, we seen that the lesson did start to pick up again and become more fun and creative. So lay it on me, how, how can I make this third round pop? How can I knock it out the ballpark? Kind of pick it up so um, they are able to keep their interest and not bounce back and forth. We did think that by g gaining like collaborative, like what you did with the, um, in your introduction with the playing scenario, the game, a lot of students were, you know, speaking because they were collaborating. So, you know, they were more engaged. So I got you. Okay. Well, I'll see what we can do with that. Thanks, ladies. 
<laughs> feeling good about it, you know. I mean, definitely agree with it. You know, I I could feel like the enthusiasm was kind of starting to go down a little bit, you know. So you just just kind of a confirmation of of, uh, of of what I was feeling a little bit. I like, you know, that they're asking questions that seem to be involved. They seem to be pretty interested in it. You know, teaching distance, it, it always presents that challenge, right? Because as a teacher, you, you know, you, you want to read the room. And when all the microphones are muted, it, it makes it a little difficult. So you, you end up running on faith a little bit, right? I'm, I'm going to roll out a little quizzes, you know, which is like, you know, they all get to co compete and see who got what right and all that stuff. Elena, all right, it's time. You're up. Let's see how you fared in that rubric. I was confused a lot though, so maybe uh, I don't know because like I don't want to get I don't want to give her like a little grade because she wasn't really that bad. I agree with um, Devon. I was a little bit confused. I was just lost. I, know, I was I was lost like as well, and like when I needed help, she wasn't like really understanding what I was trying to say or anything. I wouldn't say it was necessarily fun, but it was creative. I feel like she was knowledgeable of some of the stuff. Not necessarily all of the stuff, because she had the website really teach them. Um, at times, the students weren't engaged all the way. Going off of what um, the students were looking like, like they weren't really participating or anything, like it was really like silent. You could tell she thinks it's fun and she has like the enthusiasm and she's trying to draw them in. Um, we thought the lesson was very creative. We also said that you were very knowledgeable on the topic. Kids attention like engagement could have been better you did well in incorporating social media and um music um for the activity section it's the same grade we gave you a b we don't think it was that fun but we did see the students start to stray away kind of um but i think that has something to do with um getting everything together like the technology part um but you did include music and social media into it so that was good take time out to get to know them a little bit more you could definitely do something like very interactive yeah maybe the assessment could be something where it's collaborative okay thank you mm -hmm. um it is what it is i'm okay <laughs> i'm doing fine well, I'm expressing I, I'm I'm experiencing a little frustration with technology right now. Well, I'm feeling good that um, the students are uh, connected with the information and they're excited about Rihanna because they know Rihanna. Uh, good feedback like that helps you to go back and problem solve. So one of the one of the tips was wasn't that much fun. So now I have to think about hmm, how do I how do I get the fun into this lesson? How do I make this more engaging? All right, Doc, now that each contestant have received a progress report uh, for this Black Academics competition, it's time to skate on in to round two. I'm doing Tony Braxton. You doing Tony Braxton? What are you doing? I'll do uh, Sammy Davis Jr. Okay. All right. So looking at Sammy Davis Jr., here's his music. Color is the chocolate and a miracle that you and the candy man. You've heard this song. I know you've heard this song. I'm only gonna play a little because you know it. So could I possibly tell Sammy Davis Jr., dude, you need to probably invest some of this money. You're making a lot of money right now. What would you tell your friends? What would you tell them? Well, I wanna know. So you can at me at Instagram. I'm at Ivy School Days with Mrs. G. That's my Instagram and my TikTok. And when you've created a post, you can post it right there on either one, Instagram or TikTok. Y'all ready for this though? I, I really want to know who, who's going to come out on top. I'm, I'm really excited to see who's, who's going to take the crown home. Who's going to be the stock market king? Because I really feel like whoever wins this quiz, whoever wins this competition is probably going to be the person who makes the most money in the stocks moving forward. Oh, it's, it's going to be me. I always win these. Oh, is that right? Well, we're going to see. Let's get it. Ooh, Christy, y'all know. Uh-oh, look, looking like Brandon up on top, though. You was at first, but Br Brandon got you. Ooh, we got Brandon up in here, okay. Ooh, two of y'all got it wrong, all good, no worries. Christiana with third place. Okay, not bad. Miles with that second spot. Brandon taking home the crown, though. No. 
So it's wise to buy a stock when its value is low. You want to pay not too much for it, but then you want to sell it when it's worth a lot more. And this one's the trickiest one of the entire thing. Trust me, everybody misses this one. It's like when you're doing the, like when you're doing it, it makes sense because you know to buy it low. But when somebody talks about it, it can be a little bit confusing to put that knowledge down on paper. Here's the first question. Oh, somebody already answered, but go ahead and private um, answer to me. Um, how many quadrants are in the cash flow quadrant? Your choices are there on the screen. Uh, go ahead and send me your answers. I think I'm waiting for just one more because I believe we have six participants. All right, awesome. Cool. Um, next, a certain amount of money will guarantee your happiness. True or false? Yes or no? You can you can you can make millions of dollars and then to guarantee that you're happy. Awesome. Got them. Next, how many books do the super elite read per year? 50 plus, 25 plus. 30 plus or 10. I think I got everybody. Great. Um, but give me something that you heard that may have been, that you may have heard before. Like that was a, that was a um, kind of reinforce what you already knew. And then give me one thing that you may have picked up today that you didn't know. Well, I thought the cash flow quadrant was really interesting. And I felt like in that I, I learned some, but also had some reiterated for me. What I learned is that only one to two, that average people only read one to two books a year, which is me actually. So um, that actually like made me want to read more. Woo, that was a lot of game being dropped, man. I hope they all soaked it up. Let's go ahead and check in to see what their final grades were. And the winner is Greg Seawall. Congratulations, my friend. Dropping that game on them one time. Black academics, bringing education to a whole nother plateau. Uh, thank you for tuning in. You know, follow us on all the social media outlets, and we'll see you next time. Salute. All right. Uh... That's Blackademics. That's uh, that is our 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 pilot episode, our first episode. Um, first, I wanted to say uh, thank you to our teachers who participated: uh, Delana Goins, Greg Seawalt, Corey Saxton. Uh, Greg and Corey couldn't be here today, but I tell you, it it takes a lot of a lot of courage. Mm. To to get on screen. This is something we've never done this before, right? And so to be the first as as we as creators, you know, try to figure out how to do this, uh, trying to get the kids together. You all know we are in uh, a pandemic. And so we had to do everything through Zoom, which, which brought its own set of challenges itself. And I think, you know, all of our contestants to to one degree or another experience the challenges of teaching through Zoom, right? Uh, it, it takes you out of your game. And, but but we thought it was important to show that because that's what teachers are experiencing nowadays. But, you know, all all, all praise and, 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 and appreciation goes to our teachers. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say, and, and then I'll, I'll hand it over, um, is that Black Academics is our presentation to the world of, of not just uh, what, what academics for Black educators look like, but it is our vision of what education could become. That is, education should become inclusive of topics that, that aren't just traditional academic topics, but non-traditional topics such as financial literacy. Um, we believe that 
youth voice should be a central part of academics, which is why we had our youth participate in the judging. Um, and most importantly, we believe that that education should be culturally responsive and, and culturally responsive is not just, you know, about ethnicity. It's about understanding who your audience is and, and, and making sure that you cater to them as you try to deliver the lesson plan. So uh, this is our presentation to the world. We hope that you you liked it. I'm looking through the comments and, and I will say you all got me smiling and everything. But again, I, I'll, I'll I'll pass the mic to, to my co-creators and, and to Ms. Goins. And if you all have any questions, feel free to hit the chat box um, because we, we would love to be able to, to answer your questions as we, as we continue to move forward. Uh, you know, I got to speak earlier, Dr. Q, go ahead and, and jump on one time. I, I'll save mine for the end. And then obviously we wanna hear, uh, you know, the uh, the wonderful uh, Miss Delana going. So Dr. Q, go ahead and jump in. Uh, wonderful. Um, we're just excited. Um, it has been a lot of planning and preparation to really bring this forth. Um, one thing I know is that um, in this uh, pandemic season, so many uh, people across the world have really tapped into their innovation and their creativity. We've been seeing it on the TikToks and all the various social media platforms. And so this was the way in which we wanted to use our witty inventions to really do something dynamic and different in uh, the game of education. Um, and one thing to uh, I always like to keep in mind as I rewatched it again and again and again is uh, my background is also in administration, school administration, K through 12, and really thinking of things from an administrative perspective. When we come and visit classrooms, we sometimes only get a snapshot of what our educators are, um, how they're connecting with students and the delivery and content that they're providing our kiddos. And so we as viewers, we really only got a snapshot. Like we, you know, it would have been too long to um, provide you all with a production of every single last one of the teacher's full lessons. And so um, it just also has my brain uh, curiously thinking, um, what was the rest of the lesson? Or what were the elements that we missed in the lesson? And uh, oftentimes from an administrative standpoint, we really just don't get the opportunity to see the full and the entire package. And so uh, I was just reminded of that as we just saw a glimpse of what each and every teacher brought to the table. But to see um, the full lessons, you would have been blown away by the level of creativity and innovation that our teachers were able to bring to students that they never met before. So that's also a different dynamic as well. Typically you've been in the class with your students, you're familiar with your students, but on this game, um, you only get to really meet your students for a short while before you then begin the, the content uh, delivery part. So again, I can't thank the teachers enough for um, being a part of this pilot episode and also bringing their A game to uh, Black academics. And before I turn it over to uh, Ms. Goins, let me just piggyback on what you said. One thing that was really highlighted for me, and I know you all picked it up as educators, um, and then any educators that are, are watching right now, uh, she incorporated, because we gave her these three items, right, that she had to use. So she tried to incorporate social media. But it turned out some, some of the, the middle school kids didn't have social media. So like her activity was like all thrown off, but she did not blink. She did not bat her eye. And, and we all been there as teachers. Like she immediately said, okay, well, pretend like you have one and then make a post. That's that, to me, like that was brilliant. That was like quick on your feet, light on your toes. Because when we step into a classroom, every day is different and you never know what challenge is going to happen. And you're going to find yourself oftentimes having to shift midstream right so like i know that that for her as a teacher like you're like oh but th you know my plan was for this but that's real life and and she was amazing i mean she, and we saw the clip but like it was really like that in real life when you watch the clip like as soon as they hit she like paused for a second 
she brainstormed and immediately said, okay, well, just pretend like you have one and uh, hit me with the post. But those are the types of hurdles like as educators we face. And so I, I just want to give her applause for that. And that's something like the average viewer may not get, you know, pick up on, but that, that, that's everyday life as an educator. So I just want to shout out, shout her out before uh, I turn the microphone over to her. All right, Ms. Goins, without further ado, it's on you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Santos. I, I, I don't know what I'm really supposed to say. The only thing that I really, the only thing that I, that keeps coming to my mind is um, when I found out what the, what the tools were, um, honestly, when it comes to financial literacy, I, I, the only thing I really know how to do is swipe a card. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not the most financially literate person and thank God for my husband of 31 years because he is a financial genius. So I usually rely upon his expertise. So, um, that, but I think that uh, even with that, uh, being an educator, you have to be ready for anything. You have to make sure that um, even if you don't know the content, you study it enough so that you can deliver the lesson effectively to your students um, and then to provide them with the tools so that, and that also says a lot about um, providing opportunities for inquiry and for um, extended thinking with kiddos. Um, and I, I was really excited because I'm really not in the classroom anymore. I'm actually an intervention specialist. So I, I was excited because I had an opportunity to actually put a lesson together. Uh, and not only did I get a chance to put a lesson together, I got to use all of the things that we've been having to use. We were using that during crisis teaching. And now um, if you think that was something, putting that together, I mean, there are so many other things that we have learned since that time. Um, I even know how to make a, a virtual sticker book now and, and that, that's amazing. So uh, thank you so much. I had a great time and uh, I just, um, it, it taught me a lot about uh, making sure that um, we just uh, customize and to make sure that we have um, a broader sense of being prepared in this world of distance learning and teaching. So I had fun. And, you know, I just want to tip my hat to you. Uh, I'm just in my mind reflecting about watching your lesson and just, you know, the way that you 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 embraced uh, some of the tools that are readily available, uh, the Pear Deck, you know, um, that was the first time I actually saw it live. And so that was that was good for me. And I actually brought that back to uh, to my staff at Elite. Like, here's a good way to get instant feedback. You know what I mean? So, like, I, I really... I really enjoyed that. And uh, that's the other thing, IJ, and I know that you and, and, and Dr. Q are on, on page with me, but, you know, especially in this COVID environment, um, bringing some tools that educators can use immediately uh, to increase that engagement, uh, which is really important, right, for our black and brown kids, man, to be engaged because, because you know, we, you know we, it's, it's critical times right now. Like, like I think about the kids, some of the kids that we're dealing with and we're trying to constantly reach out to, um, you know, and if we don't grab them, we can lose them. And we know it's critical right now, right? So very, all those types, yeah, and all those types of things to, to get them engaged and make it fun. Like it's, it's cr more critical now than ever, you know, because there's so many things that, that our kids are dealing with um, that, that are pulling at them constantly. And if you don't have something pulling them back to the right thing, then the wrong thing is going to grab at them, right? Yes. And so, you know, I, I just applaud you because I, I saw it. Like, I saw it. Like, that was engaging for me. Um, and so, you know, with kids, that's the trick. Like, what, what are they really into? What are they not into? Like, it's tough. Like, it's it's a, it's a crapshoot. Like, some my kids tell me, my, my own kids, and you've seen them walking in the background. The things I think are funny, they're like, Dad, you're corny. <laughs> yeah, you're corny. They, they, every joke I had like that, it's a dad joke. <laughs> right. And so we so, have, uh, there's a couple questions that were in the chat. I just want to make sure uh, we get to those questions. Uh, I mean, they're easy questions, but I, I definitely want to, wanted to answer them. Uh, so the first one is from Bell Reyes. She is asking, how often will episodes air? Uh, Ms. Reyes, we are we are 
in talks about that <laughs> right now. Um, we our plan is to to release one episode uh, a month. Uh, all three of us, uh, Arnani, uh, Kiana, and myself, you know, we all work full time, and so we're we're taking on this task uh, in our free time to do. And so it, it's just it's it's time consuming just in terms of the recording and the editing. But our goal is starting late January. Um, to just produce one episode uh, a month so that folks can can tap into our YouTube channel and check us out. Uh, if we can get more resources, then then possibly we can uptick uh, that that release schedule. I, I will tell you this much: if you have a a young person that is interested in in videography, uh, editing, digital work, creative work like that send them our way, we'll, we'll give them a Black Academics internship uh, and they can be a part of the movement as well. Um, and then to Ms. Mason, okay. Tina Mason, that goes along with uh, Ms. Reyes' question, um, we're doing all age range. And so I just wanna give you all this kind of preview as, as we're looking forward. Uh, our next episode, we're planning on the topic being democracy. And we're hoping that we can uh, work with high school students for, for that episode. Uh, the episode after that, we're looking at history. Um, and we're hoping that we can get lower elementary students, so grade uh, grades three through five to participate in that episode. Um, and then our episode, our, our third episode that we have in the works is on growth mindset. Uh, and, and social emotional learning. And we're looking at upper elementary. So fifth through seventh uh, for that episode. So we have three episode topics and age uh, groups in the work. W what I will say to, to all of you at, as, as you're listening to us, if you have a topic that you think will be a good topic for our show, just drop it in the chat. Let us know what you think in terms of what topics we need to, we need to tackle next what age group we need to work with, um, as well as some backpack items. You know, we, we, need, we need ideas for that briefcase full of gang that we can give our teachers every, because the, the, the two things that really make this unique, I think is one, the backpack full of gang that we're asking them to incorporate those things into their lessons and then having the youth uh, as judges. Um, and then that's the last piece I wanna just give you all our goal is to always use youth as our judges. Um, and, and we're probably, the, the youngest will probably go is somewhere around middle school, seventh grade. Uh, we'll, use, we'll use those students to be judges on our elementary episodes, uh, but primarily it'll be middle school, high school students, you know, early college like early college, maybe first or freshman or sophomore year be the oldest we go because we really wanna, wanna highlight the youth voice in this and, and give them an opportunity to speak about what they need, especially considering that we're, we're really going for a diverse body of students, right? We're going for those students that are typically silenced, marginalized, pushed aside, forgotten about. And so we want their voice in this and giving them an opportunity to be judges is a great opportunity for them. So any ideas you have, throw it in the chat. We take in all ideas and, and we'll try to capitalize on it. Hey, IJ, can we, um, or uh, Dr. Q, can you drop maybe your email address? Because I know that uh, even, even after today, you know, being thought provoked and whatnot, like yeah, stuff but... might, might come later. And we, we want to take all ideas. We want to take all suggestions because at the end of the day, you know, it takes a village, right? I mean, that's the cliche, but, you know, we're trying to do something that's groundbreaking, uh, that can impact uh, people throughout generations. So, you know, we, we, we need all of that. So we just dropped the, uh, the email in the chat. So even after today, you know, sometimes uh, ideas come, you know, in the middle middle of the night when you're sleeping and you wake up. If, if it come to you, um, because we, we're trying to make that type of impact, just, just hit us. One uh, thing I wanted to brush on, um, I know we talked about students as judges, because um, we're, we're really trying to use this opportunity or this platform to really 
get you to understand the um, the way in which the show was developed. So like insights to the, the creators. And so um, one thing we haven't touched on was the actual contestants. Uh, one thing that we were really, really intentional of doing is making sure that we had teachers who are what's called traditional teachers who have gone through the process of attaining their certifications and may be deemed as highly qualified educators and who have some uh, profession um, or career inside of the classroom or inside of public uh, charter or private schools. But one of the other aspects we wanted to highlight was what we call as community teachers. And that's where we have Pastor Corey who has a nonprofit organization that he uses to really teach financial literacy as well as uh, community service and career development. And so oftentimes um, we get caught up with the idea or the notion that a teacher is only inside of the classroom. But with black academics and really um, wanting to shift our pedagogy on what education is, it comes from a village of people, right? Um, some educators uh, are, are grounds and, and maintenance workers on our campuses. Some educators are our Sunday school teachers um, that we connect with every Sunday, right, when we were kids. Some of our teachers are just the neighbor across the street who taught us how to crochet, right? So teaching is not um, condensed to this bubble of the classroom, but we all have the ability to teach. And so we uh, are very intentional in casting uh, traditional and non-traditional teachers. Uh, Pamela asks if youth were part, uh, helped us with the editing and recording. The answer uh, is yes. So all, uh, not all, 50% of the music that we heard throughout the episode was done by Ju Judge Kyla. Uh, she is a uh, budding music producer and so uh, she not only assisted us in judging for this first episode, but she also uh, provided the music. Um, and then Judge Amaya helped in the editing uh, and and she edited the, uh, the judging aspects of the show. And, and I had to go back and help her out because she highlighted herself uh, <laughs> the first couple of times. So I had, to, I had to let her know she had to make it balance. Uh, but yes, we had, we had youth helping us out. You know, I, I really felt like this is an opportunity to give our youth some new skills that that they might not have had uh, prior to this. And so, you know, we're moving into a digital age where digital content is, is going to be a, a premium. And if you know how to create digital content, so that's one of the reasons why we, we had them participate in the editing process. Uh, and we would like to continue to offer those opportunities. Absolutely. Uh, was that the only questions, Doc? Uh, I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing any more questions, and I don't want to belabor the. Well, let me just add, like uh, as I was thinking about uh, Miss Rez's question. Um, you know, we also have as part of IEP Productions, which is the production company that's going to going to that is housing actually Black academics. Um, <laughs> You know, I have my own podcast that that uh, you know that you and I do. So in between, in the meantime, in between time, uh, we also will be pushing out content. You know, in regards to a podcast. Um, you know, so as we're as we're doing it once a month, there there will be other things in between uh, that that uh, you know the listeners or or the viewers can tap into. Um, do you want to drop a drop our website in the chat too? Did you do that already? I did. I dropped it. Uh, I dropped it already into the website. Okay. Cool. Cool. So you know, and, and uh, really, our website is where you can get more information. You can contact us, um, and also you can see the episodes will be uploaded on the uh, website. Um, please, please, please like and share. Like and share. Go to YouTube. Like and share. We want to get the word out. Um, not only to, um, again, educators, but also to parents. We have a lot of parents who are now home educating their children mm -hmm. who may 
uh, need some strategies, ideas. And so please, please, please get the word out. We think it's timely and relevant and it is still fresh. So like and share, like and share. We ask that you like and share. Each one, not just teach one, but reach one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, Doc, if you could, um, Drop uh if you could drop all the the social media handles and or at least the YouTube because I think YouTube is going to be uh instrumental. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Hey, you. Hey, Michael was on. Uh, he was on it. Yes, yeah. it is. Hey, since you the uh the game orchestrator host, man. Uh, you know, what I mean, I, I'll let you take us out. But you know, once again, just thank you for all those who who tapped in with us. Look, we're going to be putting out more content. Reach out to us. Uh, we we here for you. We doing it. And, and you know, uh, now go ahead. And you know what? We, we got at least six minutes, which is a really a long time. Dr. Q, go ahead. Give us some, your final words, and then I'll take us out. Oh, final words. Um, exciting times. I'm, I'm looking forward for what's to come, partnering with uh community members and uh, those of you who are viewers to uh, share with us your ideas. Um, and yes, we want to just uh, keep in mind that Black Academics is more than a show. Black Academics is a movement. So if you're also interested in learning some of those strategies uh, delivered to your school, we also uh, will have opportunities to come and consult with you because Black Academics is more than just um, entertainment, but it really is to provide the support strategies um, that our babies need so that they can reach their fullest potential. So check us out. All right. And before I take us out, family, come on in. You know, some, a lot of this couldn't be ha uh, couldn't happen without the support of my family. So I just want to highlight them. You see them. Yeah, oh boy. Hey, family. <laughs> hey, I got a whole starting five. IJ, IJ got a starting five over here. <laughs> no, nah, but you know, uh, like you alluded to earlier, like, you know, we all have, um, you know, full-time gigs and, you know, we're doing this on, on, on our free time and, you know, take that type of support. So I just want to highlight them. But uh, on behalf of Black Academics on, you know, IEP, um, you know, we just appreciate everyone coming out for the one time. Uh, this is just the beginning. Uh, and, you know, part of uh, why we, we or even embarking on this is that from a traditional standpoint, you have to understand that like, education can't be traditional. You know, if we're, if we're about uh, educating and impacting all kids, you can't be traditional. And uh, you see my resume on, on the episode, like, you know, I've been in education over 20 years. I'm a principal now. And um, I just had a friend hit me up today because I've been um, advertising like crazy. He's like, man, you the coolest principal I ever seen in my life. Right. And so not not saying that, you know, the, just the, you have to be cool, but like you can't be traditional. Like kids need all we, we're trying to grab all of them. You know, we we, we don't want to leave not one out there. So. You know, we have to start to do things a little bit differently. We have to do things that that uh, that draw the kids in. You know, because we're about saving lives, and that and that's the whole reason when me and um, Ijoma start working together. That's that, that's what it was. When you hit the website, you'll see the timeline, which is brilliant. Like how all of us came to be. Um, but yeah, you know, we 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 in we in the business of saving kids' lives, man, and, and, and getting them on that good foot. So, you know, we appreciate each and every one of you jumping in, you know, advertise. Uh, I know we're going to put this on the, the tour website eventually, uh, you know, but spread the word, you know, share the link, all of that, and then some, you know. So, hey, IJ, on, on behalf, Dr. Q, on behalf of uh, Black Academics, ah, we out of here like last year. <laughs> Hey, I'm hey, I'm I'm really gonna use that line uh come New Year's though, because I can't wait for 2020 to be over. Out of here like last year. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>